It's nice to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. To worship the living God. Uh, can I have the slides here as well? Let's pray. Dear Father Divine, thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us through your Son. I pray that this afternoon that you would speak to us. Please hide me behind the cross and may the Holy Spirit fill this place in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to look at the topic triumph through temptation. Jesus' temptation in the wilderness and his death on Calvary were the two greatest tests in the history of humanity. Jesus' triumph in the wilderness qualified him to be the lamb on Calvary. If that did not happen, this would not have happened. If he did not triumph and go through the experience of the wilderness, then Calvary would not have taken place. These two, beloved, are crucial in the plan of salvation. We will first look at the 40 days fast. The Bible tells us as soon as Jesus was baptized in Matthew, sorry, chapter 4 and verse 2, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. 40 days and 40 nights fasting. I mean, if you eat three meals a day, then he missed 120 meals. For, us, for many of us to miss one, deal is a great, one meal is a great deal. But I know some, they fast for one day. They do it habitually. I know some others who have fasted for three days. Some for one week, some for 10 days. I met uh, one of my friends in Bangalore, and he said, Michael, I fasted like Jesus for 40 days. I said, really? Then he's, I asked him, did you miss all the meals? He said, no, breakfast and lunch I missed, night I ate well. <laughs> well, that's not what Jesus went through. And our Muslim friends, they fast for 30 days in a month during Ramadan. But it's during the days from sunrise to sunset, they fast. From sunset to sunrise, they feast, actually. Because I was in the Islamic country. They put on more weight uh, during Ramadan. But Jesus, the Bible says here, He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Complete fast. And he was not just fasting. He was praying. Intensely praying. And also, he was battling temptation. The National Library of Medicine tells us about fast. How long a person can fast? Some reports have noted that death can occur between 43 and 70 days of fasting. Some have tried fasting for around 40 days and gone even up to 70 days and they died. I mean, you cannot fast more than that. And these who have gone to those numbers, basically, they were not doing anything much. State of inactivity just on bed. But Jesus, when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was praying intensely, probably 18 hours a day, sleeping maybe six hours. And also the Bible tells us, being 
40 days tempted of the devil. All the 40 days he was tempted, tried and tested. At the end of his fast, then the devil physically appears with a crowning act of temptation. Can you imagine what Jesus must have been like, felt like, at the end of the fast? The pen of inspiration gives us some insight. It says, weak and emaciated from hunger, worn and haggard with mental agony. He was going through mental agony as Satan was pressing upon him various temptations. And he was battling with the Lord. Probably 18 hours a day for 40 days. No food. And then she says in Desire of Ages, page 131, after the foe had departed, end of 40 days, Jesus fell exhausted to the earth with a pallor of death upon his face. Probably, if he would have fasted one more day, he would not have made it. He went to the extreme. He passed through inexpressible suffering. Why, beloved? To make a way of escape for us. It was not necessary for Jesus to fast like this. But there was a problem and he had to make a way of escape for us. Remember how the problem of sin started? It was appetite. And Satan got a first parents with the temptation of appetite. And he has got all of humanity, the whole world, with the temptation of appetite. And so someone had to come to break that power of appetite to give humans victory finally. It was to break the power of appetite that in the 40 days fast in the wilderness, he suffered in our behalf. The severest test that humanity can endure. The only way he could rescue us is he has to go through that extreme test, overcome, and his victory is my victory. Amen? In his name, we can conquer. Wow, what a God. The whole world is caught up in this great temptation. And we are told in the pen of inspiration and testimony treasures, volume 1, page 421, the controlling power of appetite will prove the ruin of thousands when, if they had conquered on this point, they would have had moral power to gain the victory over how many? Every, Every other temptation of Satan. If you can conquer appetite by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you can conquer every other temptation that Satan throws on our way. And that is why, as yesterday we heard from that powerful message by Robbie, Ellen White's first vision after the church was formed in 1863, the first vision after church was organized was a health message. Because if you can conquer appetite, you can conquer anything. And the devil has a lot of schemes in the last days. And God says, my children, listen, I have a special message. Yes, beloved. Jesus went through that extreme, extreme test, almost death, to break the power of appetite for you and me. Amen? Amen. Let's look at the three temptations. The devil comes to Jesus. The Bible tells us 
and in all points he was tempted like as we are, yet without sin. The devil tempted him in all points, all points, because he was humanity's representative. If he could get him, then he has got all of us. But he has got all of us anyway, but if Jesus wins, his victory is my victory in his name. Satan works on three principles. All the temptations, it's based on three principles. The word of God says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Satan works around these three. And he knows that he can get us with these three. Even in the Garden of Eden, when he came there, he used all the three in that one temptation. It says, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that is the lust of the flesh. And that it was pleasant to the eyes, that is the lust of the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise that is the pride of life she took the fruit thereof and did eat yes satan used all these three in that one temptation and he got adam and eve and Satan used all these three temptations. And Jesus was standing on a totally different platform than Adam stood. Adam stood in his innocence, in an unfallen nature, in a perfect environment. Jesus has taken humanity 4,000 years after sin crept into this world. He was tempted in all points as we are. And Adam was, he had all the trees of the garden to eat. Jesus, when he faced the tempter, he was hungered completely for 40 days and then he takes the test. You know, Satan knows when to show up. He knows when to show up. And nation Israel were the chosen nation to represent God to the world. God wanted them to shine the light to the whole world. As Adam failed, nation Israel failed as well. In fact, nation Israel and Jesus have a lot of parallels. Both are called firstborn in scripture. God through Moses, he tells Pharaoh, thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. What about Jesus? He's called the in, image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Both Israel and Jesus are called Emmanuel. In Isaiah 8, it's, it says, Thy land, O Emmanuel, talking about the people of Israel. Is Jesus called Emmanuel? Yes, his name is Emmanuel. Both came out of Egypt. Remember, they were in bondage for hundreds of years. And then God says, I am the Lord which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And what about Jesus? Did he also come out of Egypt? Remember, as soon as he was born, he had to go to Egypt because of Herod's death decree. And then it says in Matthew 2.15, Out of Egypt have I called my son. And we see the nation Israel, after they came out of Egypt, they went through the Red Sea. And Paul calls it as baptism. 
and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Was Jesus also baptized? Yes, Jesus when he was baptized. You see the number 40 with both. After they crossed the Red Sea in the wilderness, they were for 40 years. Jesus, after his baptism, he was in the wilderness for 40 days. Both were led by God. It says about the children of Israel, the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. What about Jesus in the wilderness? Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. Both were with beasts. Of the children of Israel, they said, Our cattle also shall go with us. Of Jesus, it says in Mark 1.13, And was with the wild beasts. Both had the number 12. You have the 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus had the 12 apostles. And then there are some contrasts as well. One eating manna for 40 years, and the other fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. One grieved God all the time during this 40 years. It says, 40 years was I grieved with this generation. But Jesus, the true Israel, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now we will look at the parallel between the temptation of Jesus, the three, and the same temptations for the nation Israel in the wilderness. One succumbed, the other one prevailed. After they came out of the land of Egypt, they had food for around 40 days, if you count it. And then uh, their food supply diminished. And they were hungry. And it says here in Exodus 16, 3 and 4, He have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. They murmured and grumbled. They said, God, did you bring us here to kill us with hunger? They murmured and grumbled at the end of 40 days when they didn't have anything. On the other hand, Jesus is hungry for 40 days and we saw how hungry he was nigh unto death. And he's looking for food. He's waiting. Then the devil shows up. And he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Jesus was praying that God would send his angel to supply food because he's in the wilderness. He cannot even walk to get food. And Satan comes and he says, if thou be the Son of God. Christ realizes something must be wrong here. Someone who is looking like an angel from heaven is questioning the word of God. Remember the word that came to Jesus at baptism. This is my beloved son. And here is someone questioning that word. Are you the son of God? Are you sure you're the one? You don't look like one. Look how you look like. Maybe you're the one. I want to see if you are the real one. The, the, the one. Can you command these stones to be made bread? It was not a big deal for Jesus. His first miracle was turning water into wine. He that could turn water into wine can turn stone into bread. Amen? Amen. 
Not a big deal. But Jesus would not use his divinity to help his humanity. He would use his divine power to bless other people, to feed the four, five thousand, but not to feed himself. So the devil was telling him, listen, you know, that was a great temptation. When you can do something, when you have the power and you're not using it, In the Garden of Eden, he came in a disguised form as a serpent. And he got Adam and Eve. In the wilderness temptation, how did he come? We are told in the pen of inspiration, Desire of Ages, page 118. They came to the Savior as if an answer to his prayer, one in the guise of an angel from heaven. Jesus was praying, Father, can you send some food? I'm done with my fast. I can't even walk. And someone comes like an angel, mighty, shining angel. He says, your father sent me. But he did, doesn't bring food. He brings a stone. And he says, you can do it. You're the son of God, right? Wow. Christ shot back with the word. And he quotes, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. From the mouth of God, it was declared, I am the Son of God. I don't need to do anything to prove that I'm the son of God. His word settles it. Amen. Where nation Israel failed when they were hungry, they murmured and grumbled. Jesus Christ prevailed, amen? 40 days of fasting is still one. Jesus quotes the very same temptation that Israel faced in their first temptation. He humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna. You know, sometimes God leads us there to hunger and then he will provide. To see whether you're going to murmur and grumble or wait upon the Lord. And so also in our experience, God will lead us to a position undesirable to see how we would react. Whether we'd wait on God or we would be like the children of Israel. With thou knewest not, and then it says that he might know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doth man live. Yes, beloved, where they failed in their first temptation, Jesus prevailed. Praise God. And then comes the second temptation. The Bible says, Matthew 4, 5 and 6, Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. Very interesting. Jesus had no strength even to walk. And the Bible says, who took him up there? The devil. Literally. Transports Jesus. And he sets him on the top of the temple. From the desert place to a divine place. Can the devil come to church? Yes. Yes. He carried him because Christ couldn't walk. The span of inspiration says, in sons of God, spiritual gifts, sorry, first of all in page 32, Satan, to manifest his strength, carried Jesus to Jerusalem and set him upon a pinnacle of the temple. To manifest his strength. 
This is the Almighty God who said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. But now he's completely weak, physically. And Satan shows his strength, carries him to the top. Now, Bible scholars believe that the first temptation was in the desert of Masada in Jericho. In 2019, when I went there to the, for the Bible land tour, we went to Masada as well. Desert, mountainous area. Completely nothing. And it's around 23 miles from there to the temple. And the devil carries Jesus and flies with him for 23 miles. You know, Satan probably you thought he could drop him from somewhere. No. God must have locked his hands and said, please continue. And angels also would have been down flying there in case. Because Jesus would not use his supernatural power to help himself. He has to wait on God. And he puts them on the pinnacle of the temple at the top. And he says, well, we are in your father's house. And you quoted scripture, right? Let's have a Bible reading now. And he saith unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Which portion of scripture? Psalm. We are studying the book of Psalms. This quarter, the devil could teach this book quarterly very well. He knows the book of Psalms. He knows the entire Bible. He speaks from his head, not from his heart. In fact, he did not quote the complete verse. He left the most important passage out. And Christ picked on that. And Jesus realized something is wrong again. Remember, the devil is still looking like a mighty angel from heaven. And Christ cannot use his divinity to identify who he is. He has to catch him by his words. And Christ realized something is wrong here because he's questioning his sonship when the father already said, this is my son. And he is misinterpreting scripture of Psalms. So Jesus shoots back with another word. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Interesting, Jesus picks up a verse in his second temptation from the second temptation of the children of Israel in the wilderness. It's running parallel. And there, they murmured again. They ran out of water this time, the first time food. They ran out of water. Deuteronomy 6.16, Jesus quoted, He shall not tempt the Lord your God as he tempted him in Massa. What happened in Massa? We see Moses gives the details in Exodus 17.7. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? In the second temptation, they doubted the presence of God who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But they said, but we don't have water. So obviously he left us. They're looking at the situation and not believing the word. If God says something, even if you cannot see it, believe it. I said, no, I don't think God is among us because we don't have water. And Jesus quotes scripture. 
to beat him. You know, this stony-hearted devil is stuck with stones. In the first temptation, he said, make bread of stone. And the second temptation, he says, throw yourselves, you'll not fall on stones. Angels will pick you up. He has probably forgotten that he's speaking to the chief cornerstone. The rock of ages that cannot be moved. Where nation Israel failed in their second temptation. In the same context, Jesus triumphs for you and me. Amen? Amen. And then comes the third temptation. The Bible says in Matthew 4 verse 8, Again the devil taketh him up. Same thing, transportation now. Into an exceeding high mountain. And showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Some skeptics have tried to, you know, dig into this. Which exceeding high mountain is there in Israel where you can see all the kingdoms of the world? Well, what happened? The pen of inspiration tells us. Placing Jesus upon a high mountain, Satan caused the kingdoms of the world in all their glory to pass in panoramic view before him. Wow. It's like a vision. Can you imagine the devil giving a vision to God? But this is the Son of Man. Can the devil give, give vision? Yes. There are a lot of people who say, I saw a vision. Well, devil can give visions. He caused the kingdoms of the world in all their glory to pass in panoramic view before him. The sunlit lay on the temple, the cities, marble palaces, fertile fields, the fruit-laden vineyards, the traces of evil were hidden. He doesn't show the other side. That's what the devil is all about. He'll only show what is nice to get people. On another mountain top, Mount Nebo, Moses was with God. And he sees the glory of the promised land. A land flowing with milk and honey. Now here, Jesus, the one who was Moses showing him in there, Mount Nebo, is a man. And Satan stands next to him and shows him all the kingdoms of the world. And then he makes a proposal. He saith unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt Fall down and worship me. Wow. The devil is asking God to worship him. You know, the, the devil does not speak the truth always, complete truth. Luke gives us some more insight of that text. The devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. He says, listen, all this is delivered to me. Who delivered this world and its kingdom to Satan? Adam and Eve in the garden. God gave man. He said, you shall have dominion over the earth. But when he sinned and obeyed Satan, the dominion sort of passed. But you know what? The Bible tells us the earth is whose? The Lord's and the fullness thereof. Because who is the creator of planet Earth? God. 
not Adam. If Adam created, then okay, you can say he passed that also. God created. And so God retains the ownership. And even the kingship. Satan is only a thief running around. We are told in Desire of Ages, page 129, when Adam betrayed his sovereignty into Satan's hand, Christ still remained the rightful king. And that's why the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may adore. A mad lion. So Satan was telling Christ, I know why you came. I know according to it is written that you are going to another hill. And you're going to stretch your hands and bleed to death to get this kingdom. But instead of doing that exercise, why don't you do this exercise? Kneel down. No bleeding, nothing. I'll give it to you right now. Let's have a deal. Worship. Fall down and worship me. The third temptation, interestingly, for the children of Israel in their wandering was about worship. On another hill, Mount Sinai, and here this is another top mountain, Jesus. Yes, they made a molten calf and worshipped him. They said, you brought us out of Egypt, we don't know where that Moses is. Jesus shoots back with, it is written. Get the hand, Satan. Why did he identify him as Satan here? Because finally Satan removed his mask. He could not hide anymore. If all it is written... Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Not you. I don't know who you are. And Christ actually quotes Deuteronomy again. Chapter 6, 13. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him. The word serve also is translated as worship as you can see in other versions. Where Israel failed in their third temptation, the Lord Jesus prevailed. Amen. Amen. Interestingly, for all the three temptations, Jesus quoted from only one book of the Bible, Deuteronomy. Why did Jesus choose to quote from the book of Deuteronomy because he is the real Israel. They were supposed to represent him. And that's why I showed you the comparison, the firstborn and everything. And in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses rehearses the travel of the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan. And in the book of Deuteronomy, he records the tests and their failure. And now comes the real Israel, Jesus Christ. And he goes to that same book. And he holds on to God's word. And all the three times, sorry, all the three times, he says, it is written, it is written. It is written. Amen. Beloved, what an example Jesus has set for you and me. Never go by your opinion. In the church board, board also, go by God's word. Amen. In every decision that we make, go by God's word. For that is our safety and our security. Yes, this beautiful statement from Steps of Christ, page 44. 
The warfare against self is the greatest battle that was ever fought. The warfare against self. You know, Israel and Hamas war is really bad. But that is nothing compared to some battle happening within us. World War and two were bad. But the greatest battle ever fought is the warfare against self. Where self wants to dominate. Where self wants to dictate. And in those three temptations, Jesus battled against self. All the three facets. Self-gratification, he overcame. Self-protection, he overcame. Self-exaltation, he overcame. How? By depending on God's word. Never let self dominate. Let God's word dominate. And finally, the devil puts his head down and walks away. I can imagine the devil bragging to his angels before this happened. I got Adam. I'll get him for sure. Look how he looks now. It is written. It is written. It is written. The Bible says, Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. It's not because angels came, the devil left. The devil left because of God's word. It is written. And then angels came and ministered. Christ was almost to the point of death. As I close, let's look at the pen of inspiration. The angels now ministered to the Son of God as he lay like one dying. He was strengthened with food comforted with the message of his father's love and the assurance that all heaven triumphed in his victory. Beloved, many times we forget the wilderness victory. But this was as important as Calvary's victory. Here in the wilderness temptation, a hungry Jesus overcame a full devil. A weak Jesus physically overcame a strong devil. And a meek and lowly Jesus overcame a haughty and proud devil. What a God. What a Savior. What a victory, triumph through temptation. Jesus, as a son of man, he showed us how to overcome. It is written. And as son of God now, at his father's right hand, he gives us grace to overcome. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Beloved, when you face temptation, when I face temptation, what do we do? It is written. But how will you quote it is written if you don't know what is written? Therefore, as the psalmist says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Let us make God's word the treasure of our life every day for it will help us every day, especially during temptation and trying times. Amen.
hymn of dedication is number 340. 340, Jesus saves. Jesus saves, and his victory is our victory. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus went through the 40 days of fast for each one of us to break the power of appetite that has bound all of us with chains that we cannot break. But he said, if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you that you went to the furthest extent. You nearly faced death in the wilderness. Thank you, Lord, for triumphing. Thank you for showing us that the word of God is all sufficient. Yes, is. Help us all to be good students of God's word, Please. to treasure it not only in our minds, but also in our hearts, that we might be overcomers as Jesus overcame. Yes, Lord, you know that some are struggling in different areas than the others. Please come close to each one of us and give us your grace and your victory that we might have the assurance of your presence with us all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We hope all of you were blessed by today's worship service. As told in today's presentation by Pastor Michael Pedrin, 
he wonderfully shows us the correlation between the lives of the children of Israel and Jesus. And where the children of Israel failed, Jesus succeeded. In, in the wilderness, Jesus had to go through trials against self-gratification, self-protection, and self-exaltation. But in all of these trials, Jesus succeeded with it is written. And now the same goes for you and me today. When we face life's trials, when we go through mental, emotional trials, or even physical trials, we have to rely upon God's word. And how do we know it is written if we don't even know what is written? What a call for us to search and dive deep into the Word of God. And only then can we successfully triumph over temptation. Amen. With these thoughts in mind, thank you once again for joining us here at the Remnant Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you for all our viewers joining us from all over the world. It is because of your faithfulness to this ministry that we have been going strong these past few years. Please continue supporting us through your prayers and financial giving. Visit our church website, remnantsdachurch.org, select the giving page, and select the media ministries when giving. You can also scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen and it will take you directly to our giving page. Just a reminder that we will be having a last day seminar at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, Go ahead, eat your lunch, and come join us back at 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. for our last day seminar. And as always, we will have our praise and prayer service at 4 p.m. With that being said, God bless you. See you soon.